Okay, Luke, so we're still at the uh, John Bell Institute for the Foundations of Physics. Yep. Uh, and uh, we're still going with this entropy conference and it was hard work this morning talking about the, uh, the entropy of black holes and yep. how the nice comical pictures that you often see about Hawking radiation are not even a fairy story. Yeah, that was called a fairy, well. <laughs> <laughs> Barely a fairy story. We might have to get back to that, that yeah. whole particle antiparticle over the horizon thing. Yes, bit, yes. Anyway. We'll definitely leave that for another day, but yeah. we're, we're still here, we've got a couple more days to go. But today well, let's talk about a bit more cosmologically minded stuff mm -hmm. and talk about potential futures of the universe. And we, we, we've spoken a little bit about this long-term future of the universe, about how physics will affect stars, etc., into the universe. What we haven't really looked at is the universe itself, yeah. okay? And what the possibilities are in terms of the long time scale evolution of the universe. And specifically today, we want to mention this thing called the Big Rip. The big rip. The big rip. So sometimes we get asked, uh, will the expansion of the universe eventually pull everything apart? And the answer to that question is not necessarily. So just just the expansion of the universe, that's fine. So all the the galaxies we see around us, uh, they, they started off spread out, but then their own gravitational pull, the matter in those galaxies, of course, and then the, their own, the gravitational pull has brought those together. And, yeah. and that's... That's fine, that's, it's going to hold those together as long as there's just a nice sedate expansion. But it turns out there are actually conditions where uh, the universe can, can have a more drastic effect on the things inside it. Oh, okay, so, so before we look at that, let's just rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, we're talking about the expansion of the universe. This is governed by Einstein's general theory of relativity, mm -hmm. cosmological equations, Friedman equations, which basically tell us about the dynamics of the universe. Yep. Expansion depends upon the stuff in the universe. Yeah. What kind of conditions do we need to enter this big rip phase? So the conditions that we need uh, depend on um, the things we have to put in that equation. So we need the energy density of the universe. So take a volume of the universe and ask how much energy is in there. But we also need, well, there's a term in the equations, which is pressure. Um, and so uh, the, pre uh, um, how do you want to say this? There's one way to think about this might be that uh, gravity depends on all forms of energy. So it, it sort of very hand wavingly, E equals MC squared tells us matter is a form of energy. So when it comes down to it, the, the sort of reverse of that is gravity depends on all forms of energy, mm -hmm. even ones that don't have mass. So light experiences gravity and has a gravitational pull on things. Um, what we need in that equation is not just energy density, but also pressure, which you can sort of, I, I tend to roughly in my head think of as just sort of like kinetic energy, the energy of motion, the energy of things moving around. Because if the universe just had ordinary matter atoms that were just sort of all stationary in the Hubble flow, the pressure is zero. Okay, so that's, that's roughly how I think of that. So if I was going to add the contributions of myself and the other matter into the equations, there's a matter term, pressure term is zero. Is roughly zero, yeah. All right, so what about other things that could be in the universe? Photons, the cosmic microwave background. Yeah, so they have an energy density. They also have a pressure, which is equal to one third of the energy density. This okay. is called, uh, this is called its equation of state. Equation so of when state. we go to stick those in the equations, we, we put the energy density in and then for the pressure, we just put one third of the energy density. Okay, so if I have a universe with matter and photons, the effect on the expansion is what? Always deceleration. So however fast space was expanding yesterday, it's going slower today. So all those galaxies out there, pick a galaxy and uh, however fast it's going today, it was going faster yesterday, it slowed down a bit, it'll be going even slower tomorrow. Okay. And that we can think of fairly intuitively as everything in the universe has an attractive pull. All the matter, all the radiation has an attractive pull. So everything's sort of pulling on everything else. And so every, th that's slowing down the overall expansion. So if there's too much stuff in the universe, uh, there's, a, there's a pull of everything and, and so much that that expansion turns into contraction. Okay. And so there's a sort of competition there between how fast the universe is expanding and how much stuff is in it. You know. Okay, but we know that's not our universe because there's this other component and it's actually now the dominant component and mm. this is... Dark energy. So the weird thing was, okay, we 
all the stuff we see around us, um, you know, atoms and, and radiation and, and all that sort of stuff, if you stick it, fill a universe with that stuff, then it will decelerate. And even we thought there was dark matter, we still think there's dark matter because of the way galaxies move. That will make the expansion of the universe decelerate. And then we found out in 1998 some pretty good evidence that it is, it is in fact accelerating. And what you do in the equation, in Einstein's equations, is most the most general thing to do is to say, all right, there's probably some new form of energy that we didn't know about before, uh, and that is actually sort of filling the universe and is, is making that expansion accelerate. Now, what does that need to do? Well, we can think of that in terms of the energy density and the pressure. What do we need to do with those in the equations? And the answer is, Whatever your energy density is, your pressure has to be negative. Negative pressure. I know, I know this is one that makes people's heads hurt. Pressure is this thing inside a balloon pushing outwards, etc. Right. So what is, what is a negative pressure? In, in ordinary, in non-gravitational physics, or it would just be a, a force, the same sort of force in a different direction. So you might think when you've got a balloon that the pressure of the air is pulling outwards, but the negative pressure of the rubber in the balloon, the tension, is tension, holding okay. it inwards. So negative pressure is kind of tension in the context of non-gravitational physics. In the context of gravitational physics, if you have a, some sort of stuff in the universe which is, has this negative pressure, has this tension in it, it makes the expansion of the universe accelerate. Accelerate. So that, that's a little bit weird, isn't it? That when you have positive pressure mm -hmm. from the photons, that gives you a deceleration. Yeah. But a negative pressure in dark energy, that gives you an acceleration. Yeah, it's kind of backwards. But yeah. again, this is, this is the difference between the ordinary, I've got a balloon, and what, gravi what it does in a gravitational sense. Okay. But the cosmological constant as... Uh, no, as Einstein saw the cosmological constant, that doesn't lead to a big rip. So mm -hmm. uh, things don't get pulled apart, as you said. So what needs to change to get a big rip cosmology as opposed to what we have? Right. So, um, I, well, we said that the pressure needs to be negative. It actually needs to be... So what we could start off with is the energy density. And I'm going to make the pressure by multiplying that by some negative number. Right. And so for, for dark energy for our universe, so far as we know, that number is just minus one. So the energy dense, the, the pressure is just minus the energy density. But thinking more generally, we could think about maybe it's not minus one. So for matter, it was zero. For radiation, it was a third. Maybe we put in some other negative number in there, just, just the right value. Okay. And in particular... If we put in a number which is less than minus one, all right, on that negative, so, so like minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, off that way to negative infinity, uh, we get something really interesting. We, we get a universe which goes, it doesn't just expand and accelerate and accelerate and accelerate, but gets to infinity eventually we get one that accelerates in what's, uh, it, to infinity in a finite amount of time. So, the, so my head. it goes, the whole thing just goes vertical yeah, <laughs> on, a, on that line. Enough... <laughs> yeah, it, it really should. Yeah. Um, if you were blowing through a, <laughs> a whistle, then the expansion would take the end of it away, yeah. I suppose. Uh, that's, that's not a way cosmologists usually think about yeah. this. Anyway. Um, but, but what's the impact? The impact is basically that's the everything gets torn apart scenario. Uh, no, so so let's, let me just backtrack a little bit. I know that in our universe with just the cosmological constant, eventually the expansions have become so fast that we're going to lose sight of distant galaxies. Yeah. But our galaxy, well, the, what's left over between the collision between the Milky Way and Andromeda, yep. will be sitting there in the darkness. The expansion carries everything else away, but we're, this is fine. Right. So in a big rip scenario, what's different? So you can think of, uh, there's, there's a future kind of horizon, and in, uh, in, which is the sort of the size of the bit of the universe that you can interact with, very roughly. Uh, if the universe is decelerating, that keeps on growing, and we can keep seeing further and further away, and we can keep interacting with things further away. In particular, structure can keep on growing, because this galaxy here can keep grabbing stuff further away, and getting bigger and bigger. 
for our universe, the way we think it is, with this minus one, we think that that, uh, well, that, that horizon becomes a constant size. And so as everything's expand, it's literally there's some number which is, is you know, an enormous size, but it's finite. Um, there's some distance away where once a galaxy is carried by the expansion space over that galaxy, it's gone from us forever. But if you're bound together so that you don't go near the, the edge, you're okay. You'll just stay here. With a big rip, once that rip starts, that boundary starts coming back inwards. Uh oh, that doesn't yeah. sound good. So what that means is, um, you, you know, you, you can't be bound, you can't be stuck to something which is over the other side of that horizon. Right. Because there's no, there's no way, you, there's, there's no contact between the two of you, even by the, the, the speed of light. So once that comes into sort of, say, the the outer reaches of our galaxy. Anything that's out here is now over the horizon, so it's not bound to us. We can't see it. It can't see us. So it's, it will. It'll. It's gone, ski. Right. Um, so, in particular, no. There's no force from the our, our our galaxy which can keep it in. Anyway, as you keep, it'll just keep on getting smaller and smaller until whatever size of the thing that you are thinking of. Well, once it's smaller than that, get down to the solar system. Now we have to remember the horizons are centered on points. Every point has horizon which shrinks so the viewpoint will be the same from every star yes. yeah so a star would have its horizon it would see stars flying away over its horizon so let's imagine that we're here uh, on the earth um, so this horizon is shrinking down all the stars are disappearing the sky is getting darker and darker yep. shrinks down shrinks down all the nearby stars are gone yeah shrinks down shrinks down into the in a solar system yeah okay then the outer planets they disappear. yeah I guess they take off first yeah Makes its way in, makes its way in center on the Earth still. Yeah. Eventually gets to the sun. The sun's gone, Ski. Sun's gone. Yeah. But the sun is pretty big. So, so what happens to you when you get a big object that crosses the horizon, right? So eventually this horizon is going to get down to the Earth. So if you imagine the horizon coming down on the sun, yeah. at some point the outer layers of the sun will be outside of the horizon compared to the inside. Yeah. So that means that they're no longer bound. So that sort of suggests that the sun will start to tear itself apart. Yeah, I guess so. Um, the, the problem is we'll be... Um, it, it will be over the horizon with respect to us on Earth. So we wouldn't see it. We wouldn't see it. If we could just sort of go hang out at the centre of the sun, yeah. uh, it'd be a pretty dangerous place to be, but the whole universe is a pretty dangerous place to be right now. Uh, you might as well do that. But yeah, it would, it would just start ripping off Outside bits of the sun. Okay, so yeah. let's go back to the Earth. Right. And we're at the centre of the Earth, which is much nicer than the centre of the sun. Okay. Right? The, the same is going to happen to the Earth, right? So yeah. eventually this horizon is going to shrink and the Earth is... No forces in the Earth are going to be able to hold the Earth yeah. together. The Earth is going to shred itself apart into rocks, but this horizon keeps shrinking onto the rocks. The rocks shred themselves apart into sand grains. The sand grains shred them apart into yeah. individual atoms and the horizon shrinks smaller than an atom. And then we'd better have some idea of what happens when gravity meets quantum mechanics. Okay, so it's the old conundrum. The old, we don't know how to do that All right. <laughs> story. But in the, in the simplest picture, you could imagine that this could rip atoms apart. Yeah, well. so if we just treat them atoms as sort of basically a, you know, um, a, 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 an electron orbiting around a positive charge. Yeah, it would just start ripping electrons off, I suppose. Uh, and who knows where to stop, right? Yeah, what I suppose it could then rip protons and neutrons apart. You know, at nuclei into their protons and neutrons, yeah. uh, and then it will just keep on going. Uh, at that point, we're getting sort of remember there's a finite time to the end, so this is all this is all in the last moments of the universe. So the universe ends with a heck of a, a bang. The last moments of the universe. That sounds like a good book, actually. It does actually. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Don't I? nobody write that book. No worry. Um, <laughs> Trademark. Uh, yeah. yeah. So so let, let me just check on one more thing here, sure. right? We're, we're talking about ripping things apart. We're talking about forces pulling things apart. Uh, in our universe now, gravity, see there's an attractive holding things onto the surface of the Earth, etc. Yep. The force that pulls things apart must also therefore be gravity at some yeah, level, yeah, right? It is. So gravity itself in a big rip universe is the ultimate destroyer. Yes. So there's, there's I mean, the way gravity makes things move depends on what those things are. And so in, in the usual case in this sort of life as we 
are familiar with it. It's just ordinary matter and it's always attractive and it holds the earth together and all those sorts of things. But if there's this other stuff out there, which is gen generically called phantom energy, that's phantom the energy. name for it, yeah. Um, which is a cool name. Often we give things in science boring names, but that one, I'll, I'll give that. That one's pretty good. Um, it's called phantom energy if you've got this... Um, you know, energy density and the pressure and that number in there is less than minus one. It's going to make a big rip happen. Um, if you've got that stuff around, then eventually gravity becomes extremely repulsive because it takes over. Yeah. And on that happy note, we should tell them that actually the best observations we have say that it's not <laughs> phantom not, energy. Not phantom energy. That is not our universe. Sleep well tonight. <laughs> Yeah, so we can we can put so that's one of the crucial numbers of modern cosmology. Uh, it's called W, um, and the the best the best observations we have for a while it was fairly broad, but the, it's now sort of it's minus one plus or minus ten percent, um, and and you know things are sort of getting getting close closer and closer to minus one. But and as long as it's constant and unchanging, yeah, we're okay. We're okay.